Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, then you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of the Life X10 Show, or X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find the link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. For our first story, partial cellular reprogramming improves memory in old mice. Researchers engineered mice to express the OSKM factors when they were exposed to the antibiotic doxycycline. The OSKM factors are four genes which can be manipulated to turn differentiated cells back into pluripotent stem cells, effectively reprogramming them. If the OSKM exposure is dosed correctly, then instead of getting fully reset, the cell clears out some of the markers of aging. This partial reprogramming basically rejuvenates the cell without changing its identity. By using doxycycline to activate just the right amount of OSKM, the researchers induced partial reprogramming in the mice. This made the mice remember an object longer in behavioral tests. This is yet another step forward for partial cellular reprogramming in the context of age reversal in living animals and ultimately humans. So while it's probably a decade or even more away from this biotech reaching human trials, these animal studies are paving the way for this to ultimately happen. For our next story, a study published in Aging shows a two-fold effect of metformin when combined with physical resistance training, or PRT for short. Metformin is a well-known, off-patent, and generally safe drug used for the treatment of type 2 diabetes that has long been investigated for its potential anti-aging effects. Previous studies have shown that taking metformin in conjunction with PRT has the effect of restricting the development of muscle hypertrophy, that is, the enlargement of muscle tissue due to the enlargement of muscle cells themselves. Hypertrophy is what's behind normal muscle growth, and as metformin limits it, this makes PRT less effective. The authors of the new study showed that this effect of metformin comes from its affecting gene expression. In the study, metformin blunted genetic pathways through which PRT induces hypertrophy, but also affected aging-relevant pathways, such as cellular senescence and autophagy, the latter being a maintenance process through which cells recycle their own organelles. Metformin, in conjunction with PRT, also induced a more youthful gene expression profile related to fat metabolism. While the researchers do not recommend healthy older adults take metformin, one day, it might be possible to develop treatments that allow us to reap both the benefits of PRT in conjunction with metformin in older adults. If you want to learn more, then check out the study linked in the description below. Moving on, Heritage Foundation Communications Manager Brana Deutsch has recently published a book on healthy life extension. The book is called Finding the Fountain, Why Government Must Unlock Biotech's Potential to Maximize Longevity. In addition to a concise explanation of the hallmarks of aging and the state of the art of the aging research field, the book discusses the political and regulatory hurdles faced by the longevity community. In part, these problems stem from aging not being considered a disease, which makes it challenging to get drugs that target aging into clinical trials. The book is interspersed with personal stories of the big names of the longevity research field, such as Drs. Irina Conboy, Steve Horvath, and Aubrey de Grey. The book also discusses common arguments against life extension. You'll find a link to our review of the book in the description below. For our next story, a new study published in Stem Cell Research and Therapy shows a way to improve the regenerative potential of cells responsible for the production of cartilage known as chondrocytes. Cartilage is a tissue found in many places in the human body, though it's probably more known as the shock absorber and lubricant found in our joints, without which our bones would wear down rapidly with use. The wearing down of cartilage is a driver of osteoarthritis, an age-related condition that affects the joints and causes stiffness, pain, and loss of mobility, among other things. The human body has limited abilities to regenerate cartilage, so grafted tissue is normally used instead. This comes with its own set of challenges, as grafted tissue needs to already be fully matured when implanted, and if its mechanical properties deviate even slightly from the norm, it can wear out quickly. 
The new study, led by Dr. Majid Safa, showed that inhibiting a pathway known as metallopeptidase 13, or MMP13, using a small molecule called BICA results in the inhibition of hypertrophy in chondrocytes. Hypertrophy is an increase in the size of cells, and it's a major barrier to the effectiveness of chondrocytes. BICA also increased chondrocyte differentiation and the cartilage-like tissue laid down by the cells. In their physiological environment, chondrocytes undergo mechanical stimulation, which is known to improve chondrogenesis in vitro. When combined with BICA, this strategy led to improved outcomes. BICA is unlikely to be enough to reverse the progression of osteoarthritis, but researchers think it may be used in combination with other therapies to achieve better results. For our final story, women's telomere length correlates with their age at the birth of their last child. Researchers in the U.S. analyzed data from 1,232 women surveyed between 1999 and 2002. The researchers compared the length of the women's telomeres with their self-reported age at their last live birth. The analysis showed that women with a later maternal age had longer telomeres, and so presumably a longer remaining lifespan. However, it's not clear whether giving birth later causes the telomeres to lengthen or if longer telomeres might reflect underlying health factors that affect how late the women can conceive. Learning more about this could have implications for reproductive biology and for aging research. That's all the news for this video. Before you go, there's a few quick, free, and simple things that you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already, please like this video, share this video on social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, and also if you haven't already, please make sure that you're subscribed and you have the notification bell turned to all to make sure you don't miss any videos. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video, at least as healthy as you are now.